yeah, let's get started here. We've got a wonderful talk today. Um, the way of influence, uh, communicating for maximum impact. And we've got two wonderful speakers here today. Uh, we've got Terry DeMeo and Allison Wolf. I will pass them off here to get them started. Um, and then we'll finish up with some Q&A at the end. Uh, well, welcome. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you. That's kind of a simple introduction. Um, now, Terry, before we get started, um, just forgive me, folks. I just have to have a private word with Terry. I want to change the topic, OK? What? I, I, this, this morning, when I was having breakfast, I was completely inspired. I want to talk about client service in a new way. Are, it's are it's you revolutionary. Out of your mind? No, no, no. We got to do it. It's we're, so great. You'll we're love it. We're standing in it. the room in front of people. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. It can be really good. No. What do you mean, no? Terry, we're friends. No. Come on. No. We, you've, you've done things on the slide with me before. We can do it. You know, I know you can improvise. It's not going to work. No. A hard no, just like that. No. Absolutely not. And that, folks, is the way not to influence. So, Allison and I are coaches. We work with lawyers to help them reduce stress and maybe even sometimes enjoy the practice of law. Um, Always! <laughs> and I say that as a lawyer who practiced law for over 20 years. And I left the practice of law because the stress got me. And I, I often say, if I know, if I knew then what I know now, I might still be practicing law if I had had somebody like me to help me out. So we're here today to talk about uh, an effective tool to reduce your stress and maximize your influence. Um, it's a simple yet versatile tool that you can be that you can use for all kinds of things, salary negotiations, um, helping a client understand bad news, um, uh, clients getting stuck during negotiations, even in your personal life. I use this tool a lot with my adult children. Who? Um, any parents in here? Yeah, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. My kids are in their late 30s. My daughter's 41. It doesn't stop. So uh, I use this tool a lot with them. Um, and just a note, Terry, I use it with my senior mom. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Who are you? Are you inferring that there's a senior mom? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So... So what we wanted to do was collect some examples from real life practice because Terry and I have developed this and Terry, Terry really developed this process and has familiarized me with it. We both use it in our practice because as coaches, we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis all the tough and difficult conversations that come up in a day-to-day. -day. So we wanted to just get some examples from the audience about things that you know, recently have happened for you. You can make it very general, but if you could give us some examples from your practice or your life, we'd love that. So this is where we need the extroverts to kind of speak up. There's gotta be one in the room. So what, what kind of stressful conversations are you having? Whose responsibility is it? Whose responsibility is it? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, any, anyone ever have a client complain about a bill? Every week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every week. Um, or, why isn't my case moving forward? What's taking so long? Those kinds of conversations. Anyone ever had that? Who's had that conversation? I know I had that lots. Why is it stuck? Why? You must not be doing anything, and I still keep getting bills, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and it's not happy when this is going on. It's just, uh, it's, I found it very, very stressful. I found myself floundering with these kinds of conversations and ultimately I left the practice of law um, because I, I just didn't have a clear path to, um, to be happy and to practice law at that time. And that was about 20 years ago. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So when you have these, I just want to cue you in for a moment. When you're having these kinds of conversations, just imagine, like, what's that physical impact, right? How does that impact you? What's that feeling? And I know it's rough because, as Terry has said, I mean, this is, this is the really, I think this is the stuff that drains on the day-to-day. -day. And the good news is that what we're going to teach is a very, very simple yet effective way to shift those conversations and to shift those experiences so that you are no longer having that drain, the impact is going to be different, and you can have more effectiveness in those kinds of conversations. And Terry, maybe you could give an example from the family law lawyer that you were working with on this. Well, it's, you know, a family law attorney has stressful conversations every day. And uh, I've been working with somebody who reports all kinds of things. The, um, the client who's um, posting nasty things about her ex on social media, and it's not going to go well in the courtroom. Um, and she used this process to kind of um, uh, take, the, take the, the anger out of what her client was feeling, yet do it in a way that the client felt seen, heard, acknowledged. So, um, yeah. yeah. Right on. So we're going to start, and we're going to take you through these three steps, one at a time, um, and give you a chance to kind of listen and experience each of these steps so that you're able to start to apply it. And the first one is locate. And before I start locate, I want to locate this and some other things that you may have heard today. Who here was at Myrna McCallum's talk on trauma-informed lawyering? So this speaks directly to what Myrna was talking about when she was speaking about active listening, when she was thinking of speaking about acknowledgement, that whole part of her circle, acknowledgement. This, this three-step process is a way of doing and carrying that out in practice. So with locate, here's what happens. You're in the midst of that sudden, sudden conversation. It usually happens suddenly, you're not expecting it. Next thing you know, you're in one of those meetings, you're having one of those conversations on Zoom or on the phone or with a colleague who came into your office. And your first reaction may be that you start to feel a little sick or you start to feel tense, you start to have your own reaction. Well, here's the clue, guess what? You're now getting into the thick of it. So you can use that physical trigger as a way to think to yourself, okay, I wanna do step one here. This person's coming at me with all this information. Step one, is to take your attention out of how you're feeling. Oh God, this is awful. This is, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I can't believe I'm here again. And direct it out. This is a very, very powerful step from being inwards looking to looking out. And now look out at them. And your job is to locate. What is going on for this person? Study them. What am I seeing on their face? What kind of emotions are coming up here? What are they upset about? What message are they trying to, to give up, give out? You know, what are their desires? What are their inclinations? What am I seeing here? You know, get really curious. You know, watch and look at what's going on for them. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to like it. But right now, depending on how you feel, they could be someone that you want to have some empathy and compassion for. They may be someone who's more like an insect right now, but you're getting curious. So, okay, you get curious. And now what you say is, hey, you know what? Okay, I, I can really see that this is, this is irritated you belong belief. Have I got that? Have I got that right? In very intentional language. You can throw a question out like that. Have I got that right? This is a really, this puts the question on them. They're looking, okay, yeah, you know what? You got that right. No, you didn't. I'm actually upset about this. Okay, you're upset about that. Have I got that right? Yes, you do. Anything you want to add about locate? Well, what we're trying to do when we locate somebody is find out what's on their mind. Not only how they're feeling, but what their thoughts are, what their perceptions are, what their desires are. What do they want in this interaction? And we can be talking not only about a, a, a heated topic, it also works in a negotiation where you're trying to find out what your client wants. You're trying to find out the position of the other side. We can do this when we find out 
what's going on inside them and then confirm it in a way. And here's, here's the trick. We confirm it in a way that allows them to feel seen and heard so that they begin to understand she gets me. He gets it. They got what I'm talking about and what I need here. The experiences of being seen, seen, and we hold up a mirror with our words in the locate step. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we all know how good that feels when we're, I mean, it's a basic human desire in connecting with another human being. The second step is to approve of what you're hearing. Now, this doesn't mean you approve of bad behavior. Hey, I think it's a great idea that you were trashing your ex on social media. That's, that's not what we're talking about. But approve of what is going on in a non-judgmental way. I get it. I know, now, it's got to be authentic. You're not making this stuff up. But I get that you're mad. Of course you're mad. Your, your ex is saying mean things about you to the children. Of course you're mad. I understand that. So the approval piece is the attempt to allow the client or the other person to feel like you're on their side, to feel like you are in alignment with them. Um, and those of you who have raised children, this is kind of a, a, a thing that we do in really good parenting. I get that you're upset. I get that you want that truck. I understand you really, really want that pair of sneakers. But you can't bite your sister. So we approve of the feelings, we approve of what's going on inside, but not necessarily of the behavior, if it's not a behavior that we couldn't really stand there and approve of. So honesty is really key here, but we can always pretty much, as humans, find some way to approve in a non-judgmental way of the other person's experience or what they want. From there, from there, you can begin the third step, which is to influence. And that's what you came to say, right? That's the job, usually, of a lawyer. We're trying to sell a position. We're trying to move the other party to a position that we consider reasonable or, or what we've come to advocate for. And this requires an ongoing practice of location. So attention out as you're doing this, because you're watching the other person to see how your messages are landing. It's not just this kind of mindless, you know, paragraph A, B, C, D, E, sub subsections one, two, and three, like, like you would put in a legal brief, but really you're beginning to present your case while you're continuing with this ongoing, um, ongoing step of location. Okay, it doesn't seem like, um, are you distracted? Is something going on right now? Are you getting what I'm saying? So this constant location as you're working with somebody continuously reassures them that you get it, you understand, you get their point of view and you're with them. And sometimes they're with you the whole way, sometimes this will change you know, they might shift from anger to sadness. They might change from paying attention to withdrawing their attention. So by watching them and continuing the practice of location, you're able to tell what they're doing at each moment of your conversation. So just a few more words on this. So sure. locate and improve are the necessary steps for establishing very quickly in an instant trust 
um, and st establishing alignment so that you can then have the difficult conversation. Because if you, what people do, what we do, what I do, is I launch straight into influence without these steps, and then I hit the wall. So, you know, in terms of the, the, the speaker, we're going to have the keynote that you're going to see from, got to make sure I got his name, Robert Cald Caldini and his book Influence. This is what he talks about when he talks about, you know, like, you know, friendship, establishing like, and also about establishing a bit of authority, but through alignment. So, you know, it works, and it, it works very much as that phase to open up and empower you then to have some very important question, conversations. And we're going to talk about this very specifically and how it applies in different scenarios in a moment. But first, we wanted to do um, a little replay of our initial conversation so you could kind of see how that, the way not of influence, can be transformed. So I, we're going to roll back the clock to the very first moments of our presentation. I'm going to step up here, and I'm going to say, Terry, oh, hold on, folks. Terry, we got to do a different topic. I've got a really great idea. I got, came up with it at breakfast. Wow, you seem really excited about I am about so excited. Something. You get it? You get yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it's, it. It's, you know, it's fantastic. It ties in all kinds of things. Um, can I talk to you about it? We can sort of quickly talk about how we can run well, it. Just a moment, folks. I, I know how you get excited about your ideas, Allie. I really get that. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you catch me with your excitement well, thank all you. the time, and thank we've you. done a lot of cool things together over the we years. We have. We have. However, we are standing in front of our audience right now, oh, yeah. and they're waiting for us to start. Are you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah, I am, I'm aware. Do you think that it's fair to keep them waiting no. while we replan a breakout session? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. There was a little power move she just pulled there. I don't know if you noticed it. She did something very, very sneaky that we didn't talk about. She <laughs> asked me a question. She said, what did you say to me? You said, are you, you aware yeah. that we're standing in front of our audience? Right. What she did was she forced my awareness inside me, back foot, uh, yeah, I'm aware. Subtle, but very effective, right? As opposed to just coming at me strictly, she used a question to make me see it, make me think. Right, which is another tool of location, right? Are you aware of what's going on? Do you see how the judge might take the fact that you're trashing the children's father on social media? in, in, a, in a, um, a situation on the internet that's going to be around for a long time. So, yeah. So that's, that's that ongoing location piece. And you can do it with a question like I did there. Yeah. So. So what we want you to do now is we want to do, because we're coaches and we want you to learn this stuff, we want to do a very small breakout. Terry, do you want to introduce it? Yeah. What we're going to ask you to do is find a partner, find somebody sitting close to you, and think of something, not the <laughs> biggest crisis you've got going on in your law practice or in your personal life, but something, you know, a little sticky. Think about it, and then what you're gonna do is partner up for a few minutes, and you're going to try to explain that situation to your partner. Your partner, as you're doing this, is going to try to locate and influence you. No, no, I'm well, sorry, trying to locate and approve of you, sorry, um, as you're doing that. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to give you seven minutes to do this. Um, find somebody sitting nearby the person with the longest hair of the pair will do the describing first. They will present their situation. The person with the shortest, this way you don't have to decide who's going to go first. <laughs> the person with the shortest hair will listen, will locate, and will approve. Then, in about three minutes in, I'm going to ask you to switch. And you'll stop right there, and then the person with the shortest hair 
will describe their situation, while the person with the longer hair will attempt to locate and approve. So, go ahead and take a minute right now to find somebody that you could do this with. Yeah. <laughs> so let's come on back. All right, everybody. Woohoo! And what did you discover? What are you wondering at this point? How did it go? Is anyone willing to uh, share their experience or ask a question? There's a hand up there. Yeah. I do have a question. So my partner is wonderful. I think that she, we, we work out some, some resolutions. But my question is, how do I not honestly be in a position where I agree with them? I cannot take that position. Uh, I can understand that they're frustrated, but as I am neutral, I cannot agree with them. And right, and that, that's beautiful. And that's the, that's yeah. the point. Yeah. You know, we're letting them know that we're not judging the fact that they're frustrated. We're on their side. Would that work for your situation? What that means is that, you know, let me put it this way. I get, like, the example that always comes to mind is a particular person in my life who, when she was angry at her husband, drove the car into the wall, his BMW into the wall, okay? So I get how angry she was and why in that moment that made sense to her. No approve, like, I don't approve. I don't, like, we use, Terry's using the word prove, but I get it. Like, I get, and, and now let's talk about what the situation is, right? Like, it's, it's just simply an acknowledgement that you can, for a moment, to use Myrna McCallan's words earlier today, step into their shoes and get how being in, an, in a rage or might have led them to do something that really ostensibly is insane, whatever, but, you know, you can go there. In no way is it approving. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you know, I always, when I'm explaining this to a client, I use the toddler behavior. I get that you're upset. Or a teenager, I get that you want new sneakers. Um, I like new clothes, too. I don't always get everything I want, though, but I understand what it feels like to really, really, really want super cool $300 sneakers. So, Terry, I'm, I'm going to give a couple examples from legal practice. So, here's an example of, um, from an M&A lawyer I know, right, who is watching um, their client, who's a businessman, who's worked so hard to build up his company, and it's now just about, um, they've just about got a deal, Everything he wants is pretty much on the table except for one little finicky thing. And he's gotten himself so head up about it that he's kind of in risking the entire deal because he just can't get over this one piece, right? So what does it look like to locate and, appro and approve in that context, right? He needs to be understood. He needs to feel understood. And she needs to come up alongside him, which she did, right? And after having talked about, okay, I get what this all means to you, and I get what this piece means to you, and how you feel like this guy is just cheating you on this one point. Yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. Okay, now let's just come up to the higher level and look at the deal as a whole, right? But she's got to get that, he, she's got to get alongside him to sort of start to unroot him from his positionality. That's in the context of a deal. <coughs> And that's kind of how it works. She's not approving of his position, but she's acknowledging why he feels that way. Anyone else have a question, something they're wondering about this? Was there anything hard about it? Oh, yep, there we go. I was wondering how the exchange might be affected if you're trying to address a superior. Nice. Same thing. What, can you give me an example of yeah. what that conversation might be? Let's say you want to change the system in the office and you want to talk to your supervisor about it. Okay. okay. You want to, did you say change some things in the office? A software program or something. Okay. So is this a good time to talk? 
You know, that's a good opener. Do you want to role play it? Sure. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> um, Terry, is this a good time to talk? I have well, something just to, to, you know, to share with you or an idea I want to throw past you. Well, I'm not sure. Okay, I can see you're looking, you're looking a little bit uh, uncomfortable, so is, maybe this is a bad time. Have you got too much, have you got a lot going on? Maybe we should choose a time? Yeah, yeah maybe come back 10 o'clock right. tomorrow. That's the first but thing, let's, right? Let's keep going. So right. it's 10 o'clock tomorrow. Right. So did you have a chance to uh, read the email? Yeah. Okay, great. And any questions, anything that came up for you when you were reading it? Uh, not really, but that thing is going to be really expensive. So I'm not sure that, um, that we, can, we can deal with that, you know? I've got a lot of expenses in this office. Yeah, no, I hear you. You've got a lot of expenses in this office. Um, wondering about, can we just take a look or talk about the problem that, that I mentioned in the email, right? I, I mean, it's hard to do, actually. I'm having a hard time. But, but you have to kind of, how would you do it? How would you explain well, it? Well, you, you, you approve. Yeah, I get that. You know, running an office is expensive. Um, and from there, you can try to influence. But you're agreeing. Yes, of course, I see your point about office expenses. Um, I get that we just bought a software program two months ago, and now you want to change it. What, whatever is going on there, we're trying to give the other party the idea that we understand their position. And this does work well asking for a promotion, ask salary negotiations, when you're in the position of asking a superior for something. In fact, this is a really, really effective way of doing it. And you're locating as you go so that you're watching the moment-to-moment -moment shifts, resistances, um, the, the, the looks that come across so, their face. And Terry, the, the, this actually raises a really important point with this, which is that there are times, especially when, when associates get shut down, where you don't even get to have the discussion which is kind of like, it, which is that move that, you know, that you made, which is, well, I looked at it, there's not enough money. And often that's where the conversation can stop, right? And the question is, I wonder, how do you open that up? How do you get that person to at least have the conversation with you, you know, from that brick wall? Right. Well, obviously, you, you know, you're a lawyer, you're, you're in the business of trying to figure out why somebody should do something your way. So hopefully you've got an idea about why this might be a cost-effective thing, move to make, or how the software or whatever is going on is actually costing money, wasting time, that kind of thing. So your influence has to have some logic to it. There has to be um, some kind of reasonable approach you're asking for, right? <laughs> I think the ask would be to be able to have that conversation just to go through the, to go through the key points, right? Um, and that's, so that you can have some give and take with this individual before, uh, you know, a, an absolute closed decision, right? But we can talk more offline after this. D and, does that help? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Anyone else? Oh, I had a question. Um, so kind of before we even, so say I'm working and my assistant comes up to me and she has <coughs> some sort of issue and she wants to talk about it and I need to get in the headspace to have that conversation with her. So kind of like before I can even locate when I start feeling that anxiety in my chest, like do you have any suggestion? How can I like calm myself down or get in that headspace to be able to have that conversation? I'm when her I assistant. I love <laughs> <her. laughs> Can I take that, Terry? <laughs> so, so okay. you know, let, let, let's make sure we understand the scenario. Your associate comes up to you wanting to have a conversation about the, the merits of a case or an issue in a case, and you're starting to feel anxious. Why are you feeling anxious? Because I'm working on something else and this is a shift that I wasn't expecting and also because I want to, I feel responsible, I want to get good advice or address the situation appropriately and I feel put on the spot. Okay, 
So one thing you can always do is manage the time. If it's a crisis, obviously not. But if it's not a good time, you know, you look at her, you put your attention on her, locate her. I see you, you seem very um, anxious to have this conversation. Can it wait? Because I'm in the middle of 45 other things. So that's the first thing you can do, is see if you can manage the pace. For your own anxiety, often grounding into your own body, um, just feeling your own weight in the moment is a really simple stress technique that takes your attention out of your mind, like, oh my God, you know, now, you know, when is she going to figure out how to, <laughs> how to deal with, with clients or issues? Or, you know, I explained this to her 35 times last week. And that, um, yeah. and, but by feeling your own weight underneath you, the attention goes from here into your body, and then you can take a breath or two and see, you know, and locate yourself is really what we're doing. And approving, not making yourself wrong for being anxious, but you're locating yourself. Can I have a minute? Or can we do this at five o'clock after hours today? or if it's got to happen in the moment, just that process of having your attention out on the other will often go a long way to relieving your own stress because your stress is being driven by your attention on the 55 other things you've got going on. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. That was a great question because if there was a fourth step to this, it would be slipped right at the beginning, which is ground yourself. Right? You know, if, even if it's just in the instant to take three deep breaths, oftentimes that's the piece that needs to come before you move in to locate. Right. If it's a heated situation. Right. So again, you start with location, right? Is this a good time to talk? Because often in the middle of the day, it may, it may not be. So can it wait or is it an emergency? Right? So you locate yourself. Get yourself calm and grounded, which is always the basis of good communication. Is this a good time to talk? Is this making sense to you? Is this landing? And with your attention out on the other, you can get a pretty good moment-by-moment -moment read on how your messages are landing. And if it's a bad time or they seem distracted, Often calling that to their attention is enough to get the, just over through the distraction. And if not, you just may need to wait. I, I wanted to add, Terry, that locate and approve all on their own can be a useful strategy when you've got somebody who's really angry and you know that you're probably like, because you, you've, you know, maybe you've, you've done something that you know has really irritated them. So I always think, Terry, about when I was um, a marketing director. And uh, we, um, under the guidance of the, you know, of the firm, we, we launched a particular marketing campaign that one of the partners did not want to have happen, and it happened um, without his consent, but with the firm appreciation of the firm leadership. But in that case, I was in a meeting with him, and, he, and this man is, you know, top of the game in his field. And he just looked at me and came at me with how upset he was about what had happened. And because I had come out of coach training fairly recently at that time, I was able to locate, just hold my, like, keep it together. I didn't move into defensiveness. I just heard him. And, you know, I hear what you're saying. I understand. Like, the, it, this, and, you know, it, it created this situation for you. Yeah, I, you know, I understand. I get it, absolutely. And I appreciate that this state, right now, there's nothing I can do to remedy this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what happened. And I just want one more thing on that story. It was an intense situation. But when I left that firm like a year or two later, um, he was one of the first partners to say, Allison, I'm really going to miss you and having you there. After something like that. Yeah. Question. I listened. I really listened. I just leaned into listening. As, as hard as I know, as far as I could go, right? And just 
really just let that just let that that come out and air and you know yeah you know often we think when we're in the heat of a, a busy day with dealing with a lot of um, demands on us that in the moment self-care, self-care throughout the day, we don't have time for. I hear that all the time. What I'm going to propose to you is that if you do take a few moments, a five-minute break, a walk outside, get some fresh air, um, simply close the door, tell everyone to go away for a few minutes, and just put your headphones on and bliss out on your spa music, if that helps you, sometimes that five-minute break will make you so much more efficient and able to keep going. How do I get my 30-minute break down to five? <laughs> I have to go walk about for 30 minutes. Well, you know, some of this is skill, too. Practice, um, you know, practicing your body, knowing your body and what it takes to calm it down. Um, you know, uh, I mean, there's a, that's a whole different workshop, um, but practicing whatever, finding what works for you, which is locating yourself and not making yourself wrong about it, understanding, I got a lot on my plate, a lot going on, um, and then finding what will work for you. And there are lots of little small things you can do um, to just... Take a moment. Terry, I'm just going to bring us over to a different topic because I want to talk about how this plays out in the last minute, few minutes, sure. just how it can play out in a lot of different contexts. So in a business development context, locate and approve is very, very effective. So, you know, here's the example, again, from practice, a business lawyer um, has a client who's in a hot situation, um, uh, looks like a litigation has just kind of sort of exploded, calls the, you know, the, the, the senior litigator who's got the great designation and all the track record, brings him into a meeting and says, can you meet with my client just to talk about this? But the business lawyer can't make it. What happens in that room is the litigator goes straight into, oh, I heard about what's going on. I think you need to do this, 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 and this. The business lawyer tells me after that that his client went back to his office and thought, I can't work with this guy. He doesn't know how to listen. He doesn't even know my perspective right? Um, and he retained a different lawyer. So in business development, and I think, you, you know, this will be one of the examples you have to give. In business development, when you're, when you're working with, uh, when you're meeting a new client and doing that intake, locate and approve is super powerful for establishing immediate kind of trust with that potential client. Now, Terry, do you have, I think you have yeah. a family law lawyer who's been using this in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I have a family lawyer that I've been working with for a while who came to me after she was hospitalized for stress. I mean, it had gotten that bad. And she originally came to me because she wanted a new career. She, wanted, she saw an article I wrote online about anxiety and lawyers and called me up and said, I want to do what you, want, what you do. How do I make that career switch? And as we talked, it turned out that she wasn't in a financial position to make that switch. Um, and so I said, why don't you try a few sessions with me and see if you even like this, and maybe I can help you with this stress. Um, she was a family lawyer for 25 years. She said she could do it in her sleep, but it was the stress of managing upset clients all day long that was really getting to her. Um, she made herself an intake sheet for new clients and wrote locate, approve, influence on it so that she would remember to actually do this. And what she said is that on intake, when she tries to find out where they are and approve of where they are, not only is she establishing rapport because they feel seen and heard, she's also able to determine if they'll take direction from her. Is this somebody that's going to listen to my advice? Or is this somebody that is going to try to use the legal process to work out a lot of their anger? Are we going to be stuck here? And she can assess whether she wants that client at all. Um, she says she uses it mid-case. Um, 
and she uses it even to fire clients. Um, she had to let somebody go, and, and you know the case had gone on for years and years and years, and she explained to them that um, she knew how they felt as they're having this conversation, and through location and approving, she was able to part ways with this client in a really happy way. And what she said it's done for her personally is it's moved her from simply somebody who's, you know, got their face down taking notes, issue spotting as she's listening to scenarios from clients, into trying to understand the human aspect of what's going on with her clients. So not only is it making for better relationships with her clients, it's giving her ammunition that she can then use in the courtroom when she begins to present their story. She's understanding from a very human side what is going on with them and inside them. And it, it, she, we're working on issues now. She can't believe she's still wanting to practice law based, um, based on the way she felt when we started working together. So it's been a super effective approach for her. Um, so and, and we're at, we're at under seven minutes. We're on the we're in the final the final few minutes. Um, okay. Any questions? I have some a question for Terry. But are there any questions in the room? Thank you. Um, I noticed that you guys um, use the word and a lot and seem to avoid the word but. Uh, and I I was just <laughs> curious about that as you move to from the first two phases to influence how you navigate using the word but or not using it um, to try to kind of leverage when you don't agree or you, you're trying to shift them to a position that's different than what they're... You so know. I can hear from your question, you know the power of that. Um, and I'm really glad to hear you say that because I, had to, because I had to work a long time to start butting, stop butting, right? Because but is the word, I mean, in law firms, I think we must hear it every, every five seconds. Um, but but is an eraser word, right? Like, however, um, but it erases. So, da 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 but, okay, we just erased everything. <laughs> now listen to me, right? And, and builds, it builds, it doesn't negate, it builds on what you've heard. So it's a very, very useful word to use in these contexts, and I thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. So, you said you had a... a I have a question for you, okay. which is... Is this process not manipulative? You know, <laughs> manipulative is a really interesting word. It's got a pejorative uh, quality to it. Um, I actually looked it up before we did this presentation. And there's two definitions. And the first definition is to skillfully move somebody from position A to position B. The second definition is to unscrupulously try to influence somebody. And we want to be really, really clear that we're not suggesting that you ever do anything untruthful, dishonest, not aligned with who you are. First of all, we all have built-in BS detectors, and you're not going to really be able to get away with it. But it's not going to leave you feeling good either. So is it manipulative? Yes, in the sense that it is a skillful way to help people understand your position, which is what I think we want yeah. as, as lawyers, as, as humans. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to talk for a moment about how you apply this. So very, it seems very simple. That's, that's, that's what's interesting about this. Locate a proof as those two steps that lead to your ability to really influence. Seems very, very simple. But what I want to encourage, and what I want to encourage you to do is to, is to try them out. So as coaches, we're really interested in what's one small step you can do. One small step you can do is to decide, you know what, today I'm just going to play a little bit with locate. I'm just going to see what, how it works for me and, and try it out. You know, um, I'm going to just try repeating back some of the words that I hear when people are speaking to me and see how that goes over. 
By the way, I do that with my wife. I tried that out. It works like a charm. It's amazing as a way of acknowledging that I'm listening, right? Just repeating back some of the words. Um, and try it out. Take it out. Take it for a spin. Okay, now I'm going to try maybe just some approving language. Understanding that approving is really more about I get your perspective. It doesn't mean I would do that myself. And try out some of that and try that approve, that locate approve, and, and just take it for a spin. It's just something to do intentionally and like maybe just note how it's going, right? And notice how it, how it works. You know, it's something the two of you can try out on a day-to-day basis and you can laugh about it because the other person will know darn well what you're doing, which will make it kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to take it for a spin and see because it, it's deceptively simple. Um, but I can tell you from the coaching profession, we use it all the time. And, uh, and uh, it's very, very effective in helping get, you know, establish that trust in order to be able to move people, help people shift to a, and applicable across the board. Yeah. And as with any new skill, we want to start practicing in a low stakes way. So try to locate the waitress who serves you dinner. Try to locate somebody in a low stakes situation so that you begin to get the hang of it. And um, anything more you want to add? No, I think, I think that brings us to the conclusion. And we're happy to answer questions at the end, of, uh, you know, afterwards, if there's something you didn't want to ask in the, in the full room, um, happy to help out. And I, I urge you to go out and locate. Round of applause for Terry and Allison. Thank you so much. Thanks, Terry.